today our topic is, is just that, the coronavirus, the economy, the stock markets. Where are we? What's going on? What to expect? And I've got a lot of things to share. I've compiled some notes. I follow both on various websites or through Twitter, very, uh, lots of economists. Um, Cetera, our own Cetera Investment Management puts together a great deal of economic commentary. And I find it amongst the best. There are others I find that are overly bullish or overly bearish. And you know, I, I see these biases over the years. And so I take it with a grain of salt. Um, one of the things I'm going to share with you, this is very recent commentary from May 14th from uh, Satira Investment, that we look at the emerging econ economic data is pointing to a slower U-shaped recovery. We had all of these letters. <laughs> There's a variety. It's kind of funny. Uh, we used to talk about a V-shaped, which we had in 2018. The market goes way down, sharply, then comes right back up. We had that actually with Brexit. It was like a three-day V. Um, so right now we're looking at more of a U, which I would agree with. A U is that it's gone down, it's going to stay down for a while and then come back up. Another thought was that we could have a W or shades of a W where the market goes down, comes back. We have maybe a more outbreak of a virus or more negative news, the market goes down, more positive news, it comes back. So it's kind of even like a, um, this, the teeth of a saw that's just up and down, up and down, some volatility there. That's the other thing that, they're, that we're projecting is volatility will endure and uncertainty remains high. I can't stress that enough because nobody knows what's gonna happen. We've never been through this before and the market tends to react very quickly to certain things, good news. Yesterday, the market was way up, one of the best uh, days in, in weeks and we had some good news from Jay Powell has really been phenomenal. In fact, right now, 10 o'clock, um, uh, the chair of the Fed, Jay Powell, and the secretary treasurer, Mnuchin, are supposed to be testifying long distance, tele teleconferencing about, with Congress about as a requirement for all of these the stimulus acts that have been done and to report on this and how it's working. And the markets are waiting for their commentary. I think much more of the Fed than Mnuchin. And uh, he, the Fed chairman, Jay Powell was in, uh, interviewed on 60 Minutes and said, we're gonna backstop everything. He is imploring, I haven't heard any comments now, but I imagine today he's gonna really be getting after Congress to continue to pass legislation that will support the, the, the American economy, the American worker, Main Street, and to minimize the damage. And that not all of the, um, the weapons to fight this are gonna come from the Fed, even though that he said on 60 Minutes, that they still have more weapons, that they can still go ahead and uh, backstop this even more. They're doing incredible things like actually buying um, private investments, such as um, junk bonds, high yield bonds. So the, the Fed is interve uh, intervening in the market and the market likes it clearly that the market is, um, has gone up. Um, but now the reality is there seems to be a disconnect between what the stock market is doing and what the economic data is. And people are making explanations. And that sometimes it's funny as to why people are, are explaining what the market is doing. Uh, we have had, I think uh, every Thursday, we get the weekly unemployment claims, new unemployment claims. And they've been in the millions. Now they're tapering off, but even last week was unexpectedly high, about 3 million. And six of those seven past Thursdays, the market has gone up when we get this terrible news and so sometimes the explanation is, oh, well, we were thinking that it was going to be even worse, or the market has already priced this in, or the market is just thinking much further down the road, and we're looking at, at earnings and other things like that. So there is no question I see this where the market wants to go up, people want to invest, everybody wants to make money in the market. The first sign of positive news, Moderna, possible some... Um, uh, a vaccination that's still a long way off. If you follow the medical news, there are always these first round trials. Often they're very positive, but then they, they fail. They, they do not make it all the way through. So we've had initial jobless claims to so getting to economic data the past two months near 37 million. And so this is absolutely extraordinary, the level of unemployment that we're having. Official unemployment rate nearly 15%. But um, as I'm gonna go through some of this economic data we're going to see that this is really underreporting because the unemployment does not take into account underemployment. So um, 
this we're going to get again new numbers next uh, next month, and of course this Thursday the weekly unemployment claims. Um, let me see if some other things here I want to point out about our commentary. Cetera makes one comment: investors need more clarity before the volatility subsides, and we may not have clarity for months. We look at certain things as this goes through, and. Right now, we have nearly um, about 9% of mortgages that are, they're not in default, but they're um, in, um, they're not being paid. They could be deferred as part of the program here. But um, is, this becomes not just an external event, but a financial crisis because too many unemployed, it becomes on the demand side. People are not able to spend then we have a challenge because it can be just like the Great Recession again and it become, can become structural. Um, one thing I want to share, two thirds of fund managers say stocks are still in a bear market. Historically, as we just said we we're going to discuss today, this happens. When the markets go down, they don't just go straight down and stay down. There is a lot of volatility, there's recovery, there's some good news, the markets go back up. And the fund managers are dubious about the stock market rally. I want to share this with you. More than two thirds say that the rally that has sent the S&P 500 up 32% from the lows of March, March 23rd, is a bear market rally rather than uh, a new bull market. That's according to a Bank of America Global Fund Manager survey. Now, some did say that it's a, a new um, bull market. So again, part of it may just be definitions. It's you know, at least a short term that we've recovered more than 20%. A bull market is basically de um, defined as that, that we've, we're up 20% from the lows. Um, but most of them are now expecting that U-shaped or the W-shaped. Um, that the V-shaped economic recovery, I think, is pretty much um, off the table, that we're not really expecting that. We're looking at other fundamental allocations like to how, as to how people are invested. For example, right now, the bond allocation, fixed income, is the highest since July of 2009 during the Great Recession. So we look at how the market is actually reacting and not just the, um, the actual stock market going up, what's underneath it. For example, I'm gonna go through a lot of different things. Um, this is from one of our sources. Are the markets ignoring reality? That's one of the questions that people have. How can the market keep going up when we've got this terrible news? Um, crippled economy, sky high unemployment, and it's just not being reflected in the market performance. There's a lot to unpack with um, what's happening. There's uh, optimism that we're going to start getting more economic growth as the market opens up. And so there, there's a response there. Any positive economic news about um, medical breakthroughs, uh, vaccines, that's going to help. One of the things that is true about the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ is some of these companies are doing well, and they're, they're doing well because, I'm going to share this to you, they're quarantine indexes and anti-quarantine indexes. The um, S&P 500 is being propped up right now by five technology stocks, like, and those stocks have largely done well. So we call these the quarantine stocks, where people are at home, they're doing more you know, telecommuting um, and working from home, or more home entertainment. So some of these stocks have done really well. Um, but here's a, a key ratio. We look at the PE ratio, that is the price to earnings on the stocks. And the ratio right now is pretty high, 20 and a half times uh, compared to an average of 15.2 times. This is the highest that PE ratio has been since the tech bubble. So this is where we get things that make us nervous about the risk in the market. That even though the market has gone up, we could have another bubble and things could actually go down. Some other commentary from Cetera has said, we're not expecting, and I've heard this from many others, we're not expecting to hit new market lows from March 23rd, that um, we may have volatility down 10 to 15%. I'm not so optimistic. Um, the, it is quite possible that um, if we get continued bad economic news, the more this drags out, certainly in the fall, if there is um, you know, more incidents of the virus, if we have to do other shutdowns, then we could see um, you know, longer term damage and you know, we've got some negative forecasts too. What's this fascinating economic data about how historic this is. Consumer spending has decreased about 7.5% month over month. And the corollary, credit card spending, is down 25% year over year. 
and we also see savings rates going way up. And this may be counterintuitive, where you would think people are in economic trouble, so they're, they're piling on debt on credit cards, but really what people are doing is what happened in the Great Depression is they're trying to get themselves safe. So they are absolutely trying to pay off debt, to accumulate cash, to reduce spending. And some of these behaviors are very likely to be long-term, just like the psychological people, the psychological effects of people who lived through the Great Depression, that we're gonna have a long-lasting effect. We used to say, to give you an example, as financial planners and advisors, that you should have three to six months of emergency money. If something happens, that's cash, it's liquid, it's safe, go to the bank and get it. After the Great Recession, we said, said, you know, three to six months, that's not very much. And now the general rule of thumb advice is six to nine months of your expenses. And the reason is, what if you lose your job? It can take you a long time to get rehired. So it's even though it seems like it may be a lot of money just sitting in cash, not earning very much, we want you to be safe. And, you know, the, and it could be anything, it, and not just losing your job or something extreme that affects most everybody in some way, like a coronavirus. You know, it could be a, a hurricane, it could be a health issue, it could be a traffic accident, it could be anything where you need your emergency money because you're out of commission for, for a while. But that's an effect of this last great recession that we've changed our advice and people are changing their behavior. Um, we look at um, other things that have happened, the incredible monetary policy of the Fed, the, all these emergency actions, ba the balance sheet of the Fed now is $9.3 trillion. Now, what does that mean? It's double the record. And, and the market can be responding very favorably to this, which again, may seem odd, but at some point, all of this is going to be money flowing through the economy. So it could have a stimulus effect. Some economists are worried that it could have an inflationary effect. We certainly have had no inflation, no signs of inflation. That may vary from um, you know, product category to category. Um, the Congressional Budget Office forecasts the total federal debt load will top the total economic output in the US for this year, jumping to 101% of GDP. And that's slightly below 106%, which we had in 1946. The forecasts, I think, for the end of next year are 108% of GDP, which means it will be an all-time record if that happens. So, you know, what does that mean? It, you know, how long can we get away with this? Will this mean that we'll probably have higher taxes in the future? Right now, tax rates are historically low. Of course, the personal tax rates, the, the cuts that we've had are temporary. Those are going to be expiring unless they get extended somehow. And, you know, that happened under President Bush. We had temporary tax cuts. They were um, largely extended for lower class, middle class, but they were not extended under Obama for um, higher class people, upper class. Um, some other, um, I'll share this with you to so that you see a more an economic analysis rather than just looking at the market recovering. Uh, May 11th, Goldman Sachs predicted the S&P 500 would fall 20% over the next three months. And they are postulating that fiscal and monetary policy have warded off the crisis, but it's not enough. There's still going to be more bad news in the pipeline. This is going to go on longer. So be aware, I'm getting forecasts from other um, research houses along these lines too. Again, I say nobody knows. You know, some people I mentioned, uh, some of these forecasters are, are saying this is, they are bullish. They think things are going to do well. Um, there, you know, one of these, um, David Rosenberg from his um, research company, incredibly negative, you know, that uh, he sees like basically a depression. Again, some of these terms have to be uh, defined. The depression typically was 20% unemployment. We may be there, but it has to be for a sustained period of time, like at least a year. And he's forecasting we're going to have double digit unemployment for three years and um, have stagflation, which is, again, is high unemployment with inflation, which we have not had you know, since the, um, the 80s. Um, I mentioned this earlier, 80% of the stock market rally since the end of March has occurred on the days when the seven worst initial jobless claims of all time. That's where people are perceiving a disconnect. And I think that perception is completely correct. Um, let me see a few other things I want to point out here. Uh, yeah, I, I worry about sounding overly negative, and I'm not. In the long run, the market does always come back. If, um, if you are saving into a, a 401k plan 
are saving monthly into an IRA, I encourage you to continue to do that. Saving matters, you're buying the shares of those stocks on sale. And in the long run, the market will come back even if it's longer than, than we want. So in the long run, I am still optimistic that um, things will recover. And again, as I've mentioned, we see that here where people call in and ask about buying oil, airline stocks, um, cruise line stocks, whatever it may be. I'm still saying I think the time is not um, not exactly right to, to get in unless you're willing to ride that volatility up and down, up and down and see some big swings. I mentioned these quarantine indexes. There's one research group, um, Cornell, Cornell Capital Group. And it's an interesting thing to plot because we have what the, we call, as I was referring to, the the quarantine stocks, the ones that are going up during this time because of the quarantine. And we can see how those have gone way up more than the S&P 500. And then we have what they're calling the anti-quarantine stocks, the airlines, the, um, the cruise lines. And those have gone down a lot more than the S&P 500. And there's a correlation between them. And that correlation still shows that there's a lot of worry about the effects of the coronavirus and the, the quarantine, the economic shutdown, because the stocks that are expected to do very well in a quarantine situation continue to do well. The stocks that are expected to suffer, although we've had some you know, rallies in some of these airline stocks and cruise stocks, um, they still overall have been underperforming and going down. And so we look at that, and that's one sign that the market is still not entirely convinced that this is going to be a long-term game. That's, so, and so we get all of these mixed signals. So um, here's another comment I want to make is, I, I've made this several times, we are so focused on the economy, the virus, but you've got other things. One of the things right now are trade tensions with China. And if things go wrong, if we, have, we don't have a, a, um, an agreement, if we've got a tariffs, a trade war, um, you know, the governments and the, the central banks are going to have to step in. That's going to be, you know, very negative. Um, we're looking at all these other things, home sales. We just had new numbers. The construction of new homes fell 30% in April. Again, that's the lowest level in several years. And uh, so we've got mixed economic numbers. And um, I, so our response to all of this is, I mentioned if you're saving regularly to continue to do it, if you are um, looking for other strategies, again, we've got you know, the money managers who are tactical, who will go in and out of the market. If the market does start to tank, they're going to make things safer. And they've, um, we're working with several of them, and we can even blend them within one portfolio because they do things differently. So there's a way to put brakes on uh, a downturn. Of course, there's no guarantee there by any means, but it is such, such that your portfolio is being monitored and actively traded so that it's just not going to ride it down to the bottom. Our industry is famous for just telling people, don't worry about it. Don't even look at the market. Don't open your statement. It's long term. It'll come back. Well, for our retirees, people in retirement, close to retirement, we want to do better than that. And we've been doing better than that. Our, those money managers have absolutely given us some peace of mind because they are there. To, and you know, right now, they've done a, a much better job. I also mentioned the very first one of these we did, I guess this is, you know, the 10th one was on those strategies with those money managers, but also um, re retirees, again, or people close to retirement. We've worked with those annuity strategies where it, you've got guarantees, guaranteed income. Every dollar you put in, it's guaranteed to come back to you as a stream of income and maybe even guaranteed growth and then guaranteed lifetime income. And you could even have it for a married couple for both uh, spouses, it, you can even get a death benefit. And I get those comments I get from people. I've had people look at this and say, I want to just crawl through the phone and hug you for doing this. It's like all that risk on that portion of their portfolio is gone. It's off the table. It's guaranteed. And that's a great feeling. So we, we talk about those strategies here.